Hello and welcome to Future You, the podcast brought to you by graduate careers experts, Prospects. I'm your host, Emily Slade, and this episode is part two of comparing full-time study to part-time. I speak to Tom, an assistant professor at the University of Warwick. We discuss his educational journey so far, the reasons he chose to study full-time, what advice he would give to those looking to make the choice, and how he prioritised his education around his life. Hi there, my name is Dr Tom Ritchie. I am an Assistant Professor and Director of Student Experience from the University of Warwick. I'm here today to talk a little bit more about my postgraduate journey through education. So I did my undergraduate degree in 2007 to 2011 at the University of Kent. I then was sabbatical officer for two years, so I was elected by students as union president uh, to represent them and to be the kind of face of the university to an extent. After that, I when I started my postgraduate journey, I applied to a series of different universities, uh, including the University of Kent, um, King's College in London and others to study history at master's level. Uh, I received a number of places, but ended up staying at the University of Kent because I was offered a scholarship to stay there, which made that slightly easier. After that, in 2014, I went to work uh, for a graduate scheme in, uh, in London. On my first day in that job, I received a phone call from my uh, master's supervisor saying to me, are you interested in doing a PhD? It's with the Science Museum, it's fully funded. Feel free to have a think about it, which I did for a couple of days. Uh, I then decided to take it because I was about 24, 25 at the time. And I thought, I don't think I'm ever going to be offered a fully funded PhD with the Science Museum again. So probably take that, uh, that option as it's available. Uh, so I started that in 2015, um, split between the University of Kent and the Science Museum in London. Uh, I did that for four years and I worked alongside that, and I'm sure I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but I worked alongside it and completed my PhD in August 2019. I had my Viva just before COVID hit, which was uh, very, very lucky in retrospect. And then I continued after that. I, I went to work for the University of Exeter. That was in a non-academic role, so I was in a professional services role doing project innovations around how we teach students at university. Uh, I started that job on the first day of the COVID lockdown, which again was an interesting experience as I worked remotely for two years. And then at the end of that role, I moved to work for the government uh, in London. I worked for them for a little bit before getting a job at the University of Warwick, where I currently work, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, as assistant professor and director of student experience in the chemistry department. Amazing. So you've gone through the sort of educational journey quite extensively there. Did you study and you've sort of alluded to it, did you study full-time or part-time? So for both my master's and my PhD, I studied on a full-time basis. I've done other qualifications in and around those that I've done on a part-time basis as kind of continuing professional development. So when I was at Exeter, I did a certificate in business administration with the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. I did that part-time while working, which was a really interesting experience. And I'm currently finishing coaching apprenticeship with um, the OCM who are a provider and that's alongside my current role but again part-time uh, for a year so it's it's so while my formal um, education my master's my PhD was full-time I have got experience studying part-time as well alongside jobs and other responsibilities so yeah happy to talk about both of those. So what led to you choosing those different options so talk us through why some were full-time and some were part-time. So I think for me it was not really a choice so much because because I received a scholarship for my master's and my PhD they're time limited so you can only ever use that money within for the master's within a 12 month period uh, and for the PhD it was a maximum of three years funding um, so you you couldn't spread that over a part-time basis and so it was more of a um, that was dictated to me by by the process of studying I think that if I'd had the option, I probably would have chosen to study full time anyway, just because I was in a stage in my life where I didn't have wider responsibilities like family and, and things like that, that would potentially be a reason that you'd need to study part time. The reason I've studied part time in, in subsequent qualifications um, is because I've had a job and because I've had other responsibilities. Um, and so it's been almost contextual, like where have I been at the time when I wanted to be studying and and choosing what was best for me as a result of that. 
Do you think it would have been the case that if you hadn't been offered a full-time scholarship, you would have had to almost have, have completed your studies at a part, on a part-time basis? Yeah, 100%. So I, I wouldn't have been able to afford to do it otherwise. And, and actually, as it was, I still worked a series of jobs throughout my master's and my PhD study. There was a point during my PhD that I had four jobs because I just, whilst the scholarship was great, I didn't want to not have any money. You know, you want to be able to finish these things and, and, and not be completely destitute and be able to actually survive and thrive and have a life. But I think if, if yeah, if I hadn't got the scholarships, if I'd ended up deciding to continue studying, um, it would definitely have been on a part-time basis and I would have worked alongside it to be able to support myself. So I probably would have gone for the master's, it would have been two years, the PhD potentially six years is, is the kind of traditional part-time model that you'd move to with those things. What were the benefits, do you think, of, of, of working full-time compared to working part-time? It's a really interesting point. I think that when, for me, when I was studying full-time, it allowed me to be completely focused on what I was doing. So whilst I did have these other jobs, they were all in service of what I was studying full-time. I think part of the challenge I have with the part-time opportunities that I've done since and I'm still doing is that whilst they are a priority, they can never be the main priority because my job has to be my main priority in, in a kind of work context. So I, th I think with my PhD specifically, I was able to give so much more of myself to that because I was able to do it full time. Um, whereas I think with the current coaching qualification I'm doing, it is part time and I'm really enjoying it, but it's, it's almost never able to be top of my list because I have to do the other parts of my job as well and keep those kind of ticking over. Um, it, it's, I think some other benefits for me with, with the obvious ones are I was able to do those things quicker. So the PhD took me three and a half years, not six. Um, and the masters took me 12 months rather than 24. And I think for me at that stage, that felt important. I think on reflection, um, spending an extra 12 months studying something if it had been easier which it probably would have been for my masters if i could go back i probably would have done that because it was a very very difficult 12 months i mean the, the masters was the if you think about studying as a as an hourglass you know the funding for undergraduates is unlimited at the bottom be essentially unlimited you can get funding to study something um phd there is always funding but masters is that bit in the middle of the narrow neck where that was a very that was the most difficult part of studying um, on my postgraduate journey was just the scholarship I received while great it didn't cover living costs it didn't allow me to really do anything other than pay my pay my fees it, it, it paid like I think five percent of my rent um, and that's that's no issue with the scholarship it was it was life changing but it, it meant that that was a really difficult period of having to try to balance everything and make everything work which I think sometimes that's where the benefit of studying part-time can come in because you have a little bit more space, a little bit more time to kind of get your ducks in a row with those sorts of things. Whereas I was like, I have 12 months. If I don't get this done, I'm in trouble, but I also have to pay my rent and I have to do this and I have to do that. How did you do it? How did you balance? How did you get your ducks in a row in that time in your life? Uh, I didn't sleep very much. Um, and it's kind of a, a semi-jokey answer, but I think it was, we always talk about prioritization and organization and I'm a, I'm a fan of a list. I do love a list, uh, being able to write things down that I need to be able to do and, and kind of break them down into stage by stage. I think looking back, I, I was very careful to pick jobs that were flexible to allow me to support myself when I was studying full time. So when I was in my master's, I worked for a department in the university around employability and entrepreneurship. Um, that, that allowed me a lot of flexibility when it came to things like deadlines. Um, for my PhD, I worked for a different student union and they allowed me to work, um, or sorry, student union at a different university, and they allowed me to work uh, compressed hours, which was really important. Um, they were very flexible. And then two of the jobs I held were related to my PhD. So I was an assistant lecturer, which obviously it's in the school's interest to allow me to study. So if I couldn't do a certain week for whatever reason, there was always support for that. Um, and I was a research assistant for my supervisor and the same thing applies. It's, it was in my supervisor's interest for me to be able to succeed. Um, the job that wasn't perhaps so much built around that was I worked uh, as a resident life um, support officer on campus, uh, which meant I actually my PhD moved back onto campus for two years, which was a slightly 
um, uh, challenging time to be back on campus when you're kind of in your mid to late 20s by this point. Um, but I was very lucky that I was in with the postgraduate students. And so I was able to support lots of others uh, through their own journeys. Um, and whilst it wasn't flexible in the way that the other roles were, it, it meant that I had very, very cheap rent for two years, which allowed me to not have to focus so much on making money elsewhere to be able to pay expensive rent, which allowed me to focus on my PhD, et cetera, et cetera. So I think for me, and I know it's not the same for everyone, but for me, the biggest challenge was always how do I pay for what I need to pay for this month, whether that's rent, food, whatever, my car at the time. Um, and I think for me, that was always the balance that I looked for was how can I get a job that I can learn some skills in? Because I've not mentioned that. I, I always tried to pick jobs that would help me with the next thing I was going to apply for, um, but also something that was useful for me and would allow me to fit it around my studies. Because as I mentioned earlier, studying full time allowed me to have that as my main focus. So in the way that I mentioned when I studied part-time, the part-time qualifications are kind of secondary to my full-time job. The same was true in the reverse. So my full-time studies were my main priority and my part-time work was the addition, the thing I did alongside it. I want to circle back to, you mentioned support. What support was available to you as both full-time and a part-time student? Did you find that it differed uh, depending on whether you were full-time or part-time? Yeah, massively. I think that when you're studying full time, and it it, de- it depends the, the the mode of study. So if you're on a research degree, it is slightly different than if you're on a teaching degree. So my master's was um, a PGT, a postgraduate taught course. So I had weekly check ins, I had lectures, I had seminars that I would go to that they provided a sense of support. With the PhD, it was a slightly different experience where you are kind of told, "Here's your area." And to an extent, good luck, go and find some interesting things out and we'll see you in a couple of years. At least that was my experience. And whilst I did have you know monthly check-ins with supervisors and things like that, it was much more hands-off because when you get into studying on a research capacity, it's about being independent. And I think that is perhaps one of the biggest misunderstandings that people have where to an extent, a postgraduate taught master's is just a harder version of your undergraduate. You just have to put a bit more effort into those things. I'm massively simplifying that. Whereas with a PhD, it's nothing like your master's, at least in my experience, because it's entirely independent. And so the things I was very, very good at in my master's, they were helpful in my PhD, but they weren't directly helpful in the way that they had been from undergraduate to master's, where I had to almost entirely relearn that skill set. And so studying my PhD full time meant I was able to be part of research development frameworks that existed at the university. I was part of some other networks um, within the department, but I'm also aware that my part time colleagues were also able to join those. I think part of the challenge was that those networks were set up by people who were full time. So as much as they would try to make it work for everyone, there was a, a, a almost like a bias towards those who were available full time. So it would be we would have a meeting on a Tuesday at five o'clock. Now, that worked for me because I'd be on campus anyway. But if you're studying part time, that might not be your day that you're on because of childcare or various other reasons. And so it would mean you'd miss that opportunity. And I think that's that's a real challenge that exists between full time and part time is is just understanding that the support that exists does it work for part time students and. Flipping to my part-time experiences, I found that it is much harder because not only do you have other priorities, but actually um, the networks that exist are built around those who are more available because they're doing it full time. Um, so there are some, yeah, there are some support structures definitely in my part-time studies. I think uh, the challenge comes with everything takes time to engage with, and there's only so much time I can engage with these things overall and so if I spend a lot of time engaging with the support structures it means that's less time I can engage with the content or the thing I'm trying to do so that's always been a consideration of mine and has impacted how I work now so when I think about the students I work with it's generally undergraduate students um, in the department of chemistry which is not my field of study so that's always a hurdle to jump over I, I try to work really hard to reduce the consistent calls for them to engage in lots of different things and try to create like high value moments that they can come in and 
get the support they need or learn something or, or even sometimes just feeding them very simply because I appreciate that we only have a limited amount of engagement we can ever give to things and even at undergraduate level and once that's used up it's very very difficult to to replenish it and it's harder for students now than it's ever been because when I was a student things felt a little bit easier whereas now I'm going to pick undergraduates for a second but this also applies to postgraduates you have to be able to do your course you have to be able to develop employability skills you have to grow up in quotes whatever that means I'm still not entirely sure you have to be able to demonstrate that you've um, grown your networks as well and so it is really hard to be able to apply yourself to all of those opportunities for engagement um, in universities as well. What advice do you have for anyone looking to make this decision? What sort of things would you suggest they weigh up and, and include in their thought process? Mm, it's a really good question. And it's, again, it's something I, I talk to my current students about quite a lot is this ability to be honest with yourself with what your capability is and also what you want to do. And I think that if you're saying to yourself, do you know what, I'm going to study this part time. So a PhD now could be six years long. You have to really ask yourself, am I still going to be interested in this in six years time? Six years is a lot of time. Two years is not so much, you know, that, that is a long time, but six years is a big chunk of your life, particularly if you're say in your twenties or early thirties, that can be a quarter to a fifth of your life. Um, so you really need to be honest with yourself about what is it I'm willing to put into this and what is it I'm willing to continue putting into this when the initial adrenaline and excitement runs out. Because speaking from my own experience, I love my PhD, but it was a slog. You know, it was, it, I, I think people think of PhDs and research degrees as this, you have these moments of inspiration and you go, I've realized this theory or this approach Mine was very much, I tied myself to my desk for four years and I just ground through the work day by day by day. And that was my process because that's how I worked. And I think you have to recognize that in yourself and it, it can be really difficult. I think when it comes to the route that you choose, I would always be open to speaking to family and supporters and friends, but also bear in mind that everyone has an opinion but also everyone will forget what they told you in a week and everyone is the main character in their own lives. So do what works for you where you might be being pressured of do it full time, do it full time, get it done or do it part time, do it part time, give yourself more space. But I think you have to listen to what you think because yeah, while people are good at giving opinions, everyone has one and actually you have to be honest with yourself because if you're not, you end up doing something you don't enjoy. And that's when the challenges really come in and that that can be impacted by the the mode of study that you've chosen but also things like your subject and and other things that you choose as well so a very very a, a, a way to kind of pracy that would be to say it's very much listen to yourself with this stuff like really reflect think about what's your gut telling you because generally your gut's right on these things um i think also be really realistic so it's very easy to go, oh yeah, well, I'll just do 50 hours a week working alongside this and that will be fine. The reality is on a kind of cold November night when all you're desperate for is to get home and sleep or watch Netflix or whatever, you still need to go to work or you still need to come home and study those books that you've not been doing. And I think that you have to have that open conversation with yourself a little bit because again, otherwise it can cause problems as you get down the line and particularly to use the example I gave, if you're if you're in year five of a six year course and you're still having to put that level of commitment in, that that's commendable but very difficult. So be really be really honest with yourself, I would say. And whilst you should listen to people, you listen to yourself because ultimately everyone will have an opinion, but they aren't living your experience and they most of them won't have be going through the same qualifications that you are. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much, Emily. It's been really a really good opportunity to speak and reflect about it. And I think it's these are conversations that we need to be having having more. So I think the work you're doing is is really good. Thanks so much. Thanks again to Tom for his time today. Make sure you give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're enjoying Future You, make sure to leave us a review. 
For more advice on studying for a master's and to search for postgraduate courses, head over to prospects.ac.uk. If you want to get in touch, you can email at podcast at prospects.ac.uk or find us on Instagram and TikTok. All the links are in the description. Thanks very much for listening and we'll see you next time.